In Good Shape, your health magazine on DW, featuring an interview with a different expert every week. We're here with Dr. Karl, who is the head of the Nephrology and Intensive Care Department at the Charité in Berlin. Thanks for inviting me into your clinic. Thank you for visiting us. Most kidney diseases are not painful at all. Why is that? The reason for this is that uh, the, there are only nerve fibers uh, for pain in the capsule of the kidney. But most kidney diseases occur in the inner part of the kidney. So most patients do not have any pain feeling when they get sick with their kidney. But that might be a problem because if you are sick with the kidney and you don't know about it, so, so how, how should you know that you have to go to see a doctor? What are the symptoms? There are some uh, symptoms. The most important uh, uh, symptom is high blood pressure. And uh, if you have an, a new diagnosis of high blood pressure, then you always should check the kidney function. Another symptom is the, uh, that you can get edema in the arms, in the legs, at the, in the eyelid. This is uh, also often uh, common in kidney diseases. Some patients feel very weak or uh, have uh, nausea and vomiting and uh, this may be also signs of kidney, uh, kidney disease. Uh, some uh, patients also feel itching or uh, they have an uncomfortable smell out of their mouth. Right. And, and what are the main causes for kidney diseases? The main causes of kidney diseases, there are two causes, they are diabetes and uh, cardiovascular diseases, that means diseases of the heart and of the blood vessels. And this um, makes, at least in uh, Germany, 50 to 60 percent of all uh, kidney diseases. There's a condition called chronic kidney failure. What's that about? Chronic kidney failure is defined as uh, disease which lasts uh, more than three months. So when the kidney is insufficient for more than three months, then we call it kidney failure. Or if the uh, proteinuria, the protein amount which is excreted by the kidney is elevated for more than three months, then we uh, call it chronic kidney failure. Dr. Karl, if a patient suffers from a severe kidney disease, dialysis might be the last chance to survive. So we here in a room where you perform dialysis with a patient, Mr. Gast. Danke, dass wir heute bei Ihnen sein dürfen. Thank you. Uh, could you please just explain what you do here? Yes, sure. The to perform a dialysis, you first need a dialysis excess. This is called dialysis shunt. This is a, a fistul, fistula between uh, artery and vein. And after a few weeks or months, the uh, vein enlarges and enlarges more and more. And so you can stick into this uh, shunt a cannula to get a blood flow of 300 milliliters per minute, which is necessary to have an efficient dialysis. Just to make sure, this bluish lump we see here is a vein. So and the surgeon clamped the artery together with veins, so yes. the vein enlarges and there's more blood flow and it's yes. easier for you to put a needle into. Yes, and to, uh, we have the high blood flow. Okay. Yes, and that's uh, the point. We need the high blood flow and the blood is going uh, to this uh, so-called dialyzer. A dialyzer is, um, uh, is a filter which contains of more than 1,000 uh, capillaries which a diameter each of 100 to 200 micrometers. The blood is flowing through the, dia uh, through the capillaries of the dialyzer and on the outer side of the capillaries there is a dialysis fluid. This is a very pure fluid w uh, with some trace elements in it and uh, when this pure fluid comes in contact with the capillary, with the outer layer of the capillary, there will be an exchange of the toxic 
uh, metabolites which are not excreted from the uh, not excreted anymore from from the kidney and uh, now we can excrete it in the dialysis fluid which will then uh, removed afterwards so you put it into the trash we to put uh, the dialysis the used dialysis fluid we put in the trash so yes. it's like like the kidney does with the urine yes. you put into the loo you put this into yes. the trash it's only a higher amount of uh, of volume but that's the same okay so so how often do you have to perform dialysis Yeah, you normally have to perform dialysis three uh, three times a week for four to five hours, and uh, to to be efficient. But unfortunately, efficient means only that you get with this procedure that you reach only uh, about ten percent of the normal kidney function, which you have uh, during one week. But that's enough for the body. That's enough for uh, the body, but that means that uh, a patient. Of course, is uh, has a advanced kidney failure. If I would imagine that I have to go, say, for three or four times a week, go into a hospital setting, get myself to this hooked up to this machine, and spending hours of my time, it's it's very very difficult for me to put into my busy life. So so could I do this dialysis overnight when I'm sleeping? If you are in good physical and mental shape, and you have a good fistula. A uh, good vascular access, uh, as we call it. Then uh, you can go to the dialysis at eight o'clock in the in the evening or ten o'clock, and uh, get the needles in and uh, sleep there for six or eight hours, and leave the dialysis unit in the morning and doing your work or your free time. But why do you have to be in good shape to do this overnight? It's because the doctors go to sleep overnight and they can check on you. <coughs> there is uh, uh, is some kind of limited care in these units. There is uh, the doctor uh, saying hello to the patients, and then there is uh, only a limited number of of nurses looking for the patients. But the real important reason is that it's impossible uh, to if you have a bad uh, vascular access or if you have uh, some heart pain, it's uh, not possible to to look for this patient all over the night. That will be too complicated. Okay, so it's really more about like a hospital problem yeah. uh, than for a patient problem. Um, for last chance, if 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 you want to escape dialysis, you you certainly think about a kidney transplant. What kind of patients are eligible for this? Uh, normally, all patients are eligible for a transplant. Uh, transplant. It does not. Uh, it is not depending on the age of the patient, but on the physical and mental constitution. If the patient is in a good, uh, good shape, then he is normally accepted for transplantation. Of course, it will, he will be checked before right. if everything is all right. If I want to have healthy kidneys, can I do anything about this to prevent kidney disease? We should check every uh, year at uh, at least at once uh, our uh, our kidney function and the loss of protein uh, in the urine. And if there is something wrong, uh, we should uh, look for a specialist who is taking care of us. Thank you, Dr. Karl, for inviting me into your clinic, and thanks, Mr. Gast, that we could join you during the dialysis. Music